Hello, everybody. My name is Mariah Morris, and I'm the Director of Literacy for Orange County Schools. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about providing scaffolding for our students while engaging with complex texts. As we work to roll out our new curriculum, HMH into reading and HMH into literature, across the district, I hear from teachers and literacy coaches that it can sometimes feel a little uncomfortable or a little bit overwhelming to provide these complex grade level texts for our students who sometimes struggle with foundational reading skills. There are different tools that we can put in our teacher toolboxes to help provide scaffolds for our students to engage with these complex texts. And over the course of a couple short PD sessions that I'm video recording, I wanna share with you a few different strategies that you can consider using. Today, we'll go into one specific strategy and then there'll be more short videos to come. As we get started today, I do wanna just start with this foundational knowledge of the Scarborough's Reading Road. We know from a research perspective that when our students become skilled readers, they're weaving together many different functions in their brains that help produce the ability to read a text and understand what they're reading. On the bottom level of the reading rope are our foundational reading skills. These word recognition skills include things like being able to decode unknown words and understand the alphabetic principle. It also includes sight recognition skills, being able to automatically recognize familiar words or word parts. And it also includes things like phonological awareness, understanding how language is made up of smaller sound parts that create syllables and then syllables that create words and then words that create sentences. On the upper part of the reading rope are language comprehension skills. These skills include things like the student's ability to understand background knowledge and vocabulary within a text, their ability to use language structure, verbal reasoning, and literacy knowledge to understand the text. And together, all of these strands will weave into one reading rope that supports the student being able to read content level texts. Now, what I keep hearing is a real struggle sometimes in the classroom. How do we provide texts that focus on the language comprehension strands when students' word recognition skills lag below grade level? Essentially, simpler put, how do we provide scaffolds for a student who might be reading on a kindergarten or first grade reading level and be expected to read texts that are on grade level in fifth, sixth, or seventh grade. I would argue that it is very important that we not fall into the trap that says just because a student is not able to read fluently on grade level, that they're not able to access some of these higher level skills on the reading rope. Notice that Researchers have intentionally labeled this language comprehension and not reading comprehension. The reason for that is that these skills can be developed whether the student is independently reading or being supported in reading by being read to, by partner reading, by choral reading, or by various other techniques. In Orange County Schools, we believe that whether or not a student has foundational reading skills, they should still be provided access to those higher parts of the reading rope. This to us is an equity issue because as seen in this quote by Sonia Cabell from the Florida Center for Reading Research, access to high quality literacy instruction is an equity issue because research shows that children who are growing up in poverty often do not have the same access to high quality literacy instruction as their more economically disadvantaged peers. Sometimes we will find that students struggle with foundational reading skills but are actually able to interpret the ideas and the themes and the nuances of a text at an AIG level when they're provided scaffolds and access to that text. Our students who struggle with foundational reading skills still deserve the ability to learn about content level and grade level vocabulary, 
and themes and background knowledge that will help them grow as students as they progress in the K-12 trajectory, whether or not their foundational skills are on grade level. So how do we do that as teachers? Knowing that that is our goal of Orange County Schools doesn't take away from the fact that that's difficult as a classroom teacher. It's difficult to provide access to grade level text when you do have students of all different reading levels in your classrooms. And I don't wanna diminish the fact that I do know that that's challenging. So through this series of mini PD videos, I'm gonna provide you with different tools that you can use to help provide that differentiation that your students need to be able to reach mastery by increasing complexity in small bite-sized pieces based on where your students are. So today's strategy focuses all on the student text relationship. With a focus on the student text relationship, it is crucial that we understand that reading is not the ability to answer certain types of questions. Reading does not mean that I give Johnny a passage and I ask him a question about main idea and he aces that question about main idea so he understands what that text is about. Although we do provide lots of different questions about a text, we can never forget that the true essence of reading is the ability to make sense of the ideas expressed in a text. And every text is going to pose some kind of barriers for somebody in our classroom. And it's our job as teachers to be detectives before we assign that text to analyze what parts of this grade level complex text will create barriers for my students in my classroom. And that detective work starts and begins with understanding the text student relationship and how that interaction will look in your specific classroom. So the first part of this technique is to really look at your students that you're assigning a text to. Analyze your class and consider the unique learning profiles of the students in your classroom. For the first thing to think about is who are the students that sit in front of you during a lesson? If you're at the middle school level, this might be thinking about your different blocks, each as a group. So core one versus core two. If you're an elementary school teacher, it might just be thinking about your general homeroom classroom. But who are those kids in your class? What unique strengths do they bring to your classroom? Strengths as readers, strengths as students, strengths as human beings. What do they know a lot about? What do they know very little about? What ways do they learn best? What topics do they find most interesting? What topics might engage them? What type of language might engage them? All of these things are things that you wanna think about when you assign a text to your student. The next question to think about, question three, are what are their unique challenges that might impact their ability to understand the text that they are reading? Remember, every text can create barriers for students to access it. What barriers might challenge your students with this text? Could it be their reading level? Could it be the text complexity? Could it be a different aspect of the language? What is it that challenges your students? The next question is what instructional strategies will your students respond most effectively and positively to while engaging in a complex text? We know that one of the struggles with having students engage in a complex text when they're not foundationally skilled readers is losing their attention and reaching that frustration level. So think proactively, what are those instructional strategies that your kids will need to be able to keep wrestling with the text? Do they need opportunities for collaboration? Do they need opportunities for movement around the classroom? 
Do they need specific scaffolds in place to keep their attention on the text? But think through what instructional strategies will be helpful to them. The second part of this technique of understanding the student text relationship is knowing your text. Once you think about your students as individuals, now it's time to think about each text as an individual text. Every text and in into reading and into literature is not the same. The challenges that one text might provide your class may be very different from the next unit story or the next unit piece. So not only do we need to think about your students as individuals, but we also need to think about each text as individual. And that means that you have to pre-read the text before assigning it to students. It is so important that you take the text and you read it and you digest it as the teacher and the reader before you ever assign it out. Because in reading it and digesting it, you can anticipate the different barriers that students in your classroom might have with that text. So it's very important that you anticipate those challenges ahead of creating your instruction. Being proactive will help you create different activities and lessons and instruction that can help students overcome those barriers. I do wanna share with you a chart that's really helpful in thinking about the text that you bring to your students. There are four different ways to analyze each text. You can analyze it based on meaning, structure, language, and knowledge. And in looking at the text from these four different components, you will be able to analyze what your students in front of you might struggle with the most. When we look at meaning, we're looking at the meaning of the text as a whole. Is there a single level or layer of a meaning that's very simple to understand? That would be a low risk meaning story. Are there multiple levels and layers of meaning? That would mean that there's a medium risk of having a barrier for your students in the meeting, in the meaning component. Does the story have multiple layers of fairly complex meaning? That means that the meaning might create barriers to your students and you'll have to do some intentional scaffolding with helping your students understand the meaning of the story. The next thing to look at is the structure. In the story structure, does your story have simple, explicit, conventional structure without a lot of shifts in point of view? That's gonna be your simplest structure and that will provide probably low risk of being a barrier to your students. As you increase in complexity of the structure and you move to more implicit structures and less explicit structures, that means that your text structure might create barriers in and of itself. Then the high risk of structure becoming a barrier to student access is when you have a complex, explicit, unconventional story structure, where there are many different shifts in points of view. The third component to consider is language. Does your story have little to no use of figurative language or irony? Is it contemporary, familiar language that's easy to understand? If so, it will probably have a low risk of being a barrier to your students. The second piece is um, if your story has abstract and figurative language, a lot of irony, somewhat complex language that might have some more domain-specific vocabulary or academic words, you might have a medium risk to language being the barrier for your students. The third one would be your story has heavy use of abstract and figurative language. You have a lot of irony in the story. Your story has unfamiliar language for your students. It might be domain specific, it might be academic language, or it could just be very complex and dense language or ambiguous and lofty statements. Then you know that language might be one of those main barriers that your students encounter when they're reading this story. And then the last piece is knowledge. Does your story explore a simple theme with a single perspective presented and everyday experiences portrayed? 
probably a low risk that that's going to be the barrier for your students. As we move up, if your story explores multiple themes of varying levels of complexity, um, there's experience portrayed, they're not fantasy, but they're, they're uncommon to most readers. And your story requires a moderate level of cultural or literacy knowledge, including some references and allusions, then that might be a medium risk. The high risk of knowledge being a barrier to your students' access to the story is when your story explores multiple complex and sophisticated themes. Um, there's multiple perspectives presented, experiences are portrayed that are distinctly dif different to the common reader. They require an extensive depth in literacy and cultural knowledge with a lot of references and allusions to different texts and cultural elements. If all of that is present, then background knowledge and knowledge about the topic might be a barrier to your students' understanding. So the power of this chart is reading the stories in our curriculum that you're going to show your students before you give them to your students and reading through them and figuring out which components are going to pose a potential barrier to your students. Will it be the meaning, the structure, the language, or the knowledge? When you understand the profile of that text, you'll be able to create specific scaffolds in class that can help your students overcome these barriers so that they truly understand and make sense of what they're reading. So the last step in understanding the text-student relationship is developing a plan. Develop a scaffolding plan based on your analysis of the text and your students' natural strengths and challenges. Intentionally lead with your students' strengths. So if you know that one of your strengths in your classroom is that your students will be able to connect with the knowledge of the story, lead with that. Hook your students with that. Give them victory and success with that component. And then intentionally provide scaffolds of the components of the text that might be barriers for your students. If language is going to be a barrier, then potentially have students write out the sentences that are confusing to them and put them around the room and have them go through fit like a fishbowl and write down what they think this might mean as they travel the room and dissect the language, but be creative and think outside the box about how to provide scaffolds for that specific component. So as I close this mini PD, I wa just want to summarize the strategy number one, the tech student relationship. This hinges on understanding who your students are as learners and their strengths and their challenges, and then understanding the text that you're presenting to your students. Reading that text beforehand, looking at that text from those four components of understanding the structure and the language and the background and the different parts that make that story a potential barrier to your children. Once you understand those two pieces of knowing your student strengths and knowing the text complexity, then you develop your instructional plan for how you're going to capitalize on your student strengths and support and scaffold the potential barriers. And with this, I hope that you're able to achieve some success in your classroom for scaffolding our students who might struggle with engaging with a complex text. Stay tuned for another strategy to come.